Hey there guys, Egan Knight Fire here and welcome back to another episode of Schooled, the game show where I go back to all the old Skarnas games and put all the older Skarnas into battle classes like the Senseis and Skarnas Imaginators. Now, I have been a fool, I know right, that doesn't make much change, but the point is, is that I missed two nights around, I entirely neglected the Giants um, Knights for whatever reason, well, not Giants themselves, but cause from the Giants game, and so now we're going to be returning back to them, so it turns out that there's 14 knights of a round table rather than a dozen, but hey, as I was saying, so before, uh, there are different iterations of the story with many different uh, numbers of knights, so it doesn't actually matter what the number is as long as it's above a dozen, mind you. But anyway, the knight's at hand is none other than Fright Rider. Now, Fright Rider here is clearly a knight, because first of all, he wears armour, so he has the aesthetics of a knight as is. Second of all, is his spear. Whilst he doesn't have a more traditional knight weapon, a spear still suffices as a knight weapon, as knights are more medieval-based, and spears would have been popular weapons around that time, just as much as for uh, classical sword and shield and everything. And then there's also the fact that uh, whilst he's not on horseback, he is an ostrich back, which is enough of a wave there. And for sport of choice for uh, Fright Rider is also jousting, which again is a very typical knight sport. So he encapsulates a lot of knight traits uh, Fright Rider does, not to mention he does also fight with honour and nobleness in battle. And that's what matters more than anything. And then there is Chill, who most certainly, just like Freight Rider, fights with honour and nobleness in battle. And she is, of course, wearing the armour, so the aesthetics down. And for weaponry... Wait, hold on a minute. For weaponry is very clearly dual-sided. Not only is the weaponry dual-sided, but she's so nimble and flexible in battle. Those sound like more traits of Sentinels to me. So, sure... She might have the aesthetics of a knight, but everything else definitely points towards Chill actually being a sentinel. Huh, never mind. If there are 13 knights of round table, and then once you include Igniter as King Arthur, you have 14 knights total. But with that, we're going to move into the actual episode of the day, which is Sentinels. So it's time for Chill to join with the other five. So basically, first of all, we have Sprocket, actually second of all, because Chill was first of all, but what should that matter? So basically, Sprocket here is a sentinel because she is a tactical warrior who uses her brain in battle over Brawn, which might not sound like a typical sentinel trait, but what really makes her a sentinel in my eyes is the fact that, uh, first of all, in Skarnas Academy, you can see her pulling off all sorts of flexible and agile based moves, which a sentinel would pull off. But there's also the fact that if you look at how she holds her spanner, she holds it more towards the middle, or at least the point of balance for weapon, which means that technically it is dual-sided, and the way she swings it is dual-sided uh, based as well. So, Sprocket therefore is a sentinel based on her weaponry. But moving on, we have Grim Creeper from Swap Force, who is a sentinel because as you can see his scythe here is kind of dual sided but the way how he uses it is like a sentinel too he performs combos with it and is very agile and battle and flexible as well so above all he might have a dual sided weapon but it's how he uses it that truly encapsulates sentinel qualities and then next up we have yet another fl uh, flexible and agile fighter performing all sorts of different front flips and side flips in battle because he's pretty wild and that is of course Firecracken and on top of that he also wields his weapon as a dual sided based weapon. So again I can't fit of a mo think of a more fitting class for a uh, Firecracken than Sentinel. But with that, next up, we're moving on to the superchargers. Once again, we're skipping out a game, so we've skipped out from Spice Adventure and uh, Trap Team. For some reason, Toys Bob don't like making Sentinels. But the uh, point is, our first Sentinel, in this case, is Splat. Now, what makes Splat such a Sentinel is the fact that, just like the previous Sentinels, her uh, paint brush thingy dingus is very much dual sided or at least the way she wields it most certainly is and then on top of that she's also flexible and agile in battle just as a sentinel should be and the way how she uses her weapon similar to firecracking and grim creeper's skill set is very sentinel based with how she spins it and performs combos and all of that fun stuff so yes 
splatters very much as sentinel but as for our final sentinel there is only six of them which is slightly more than boostlingers but not my butch mind you and uh, that is of course tidal wave gilgren or at least i believe that's his name there's, there's so many uh different variations of gilgren i'm just conflating all of the names of them deep dive gilgren that's one actually glad i corrected myself before those comments came uh, flooding in we have a video of that later on though so enough of the alluding to that uh instead we're going to be looking at why deep dive gilgren here is a sentinel and that's the fact that once again he holds his weapon as if it's dual sided now sure whilst the trident is much more one sided because the other end doesn't have it it's still close enough to being sentinel based i feel and not to, not to mention it is still a trident and might i remind you that imaginators just like the picture right there if their uh, their basic weapon for a sentinel is a double sided trident so the fact that gilgren here has a trident that's dual sided or at least the way he wields it is that cannot be any more of a sentinel than these guys, or any less of a sentinel, I should be saying. So yes, that is it for our six sentinels. There might be a few of them, but they are mighty, I can assure you that much. And my, and my apologies about missing out Fright Rider in a previous episode, but sometimes I'm an idiot, and idiots do idiotic things. But anyways, point is, I'll be seeing you in the next episode of Schooled. But until such a moment, peace.